need to know what the absolute best things are to practice if we want to see rapid growth that really leads to drumming success. But the challenge is that we struggle to really put our finger on exactly what these things are. Well, today I'm sharing with you six biggest growth tips that have helped my students, who are real drummers, just like you. These are things that I didn't just pull out of thin air. These are things that my students said really helped them see progress in their playing recently. You too can implement these strategies so that you can really focus your practicing and grow much more quickly. That's our goal, streamlining so we can get faster growth. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm here to help you become the drummer everybody wants to play with, who sounds musical and creative and lays it down and nails songs. We do this by learning the core, most essential drumming skills that help you get results the quickest. Speaking of quick results, I want you to grab my free gift to you. Totally free, it's my free PDF e-guide called Know What to Practice, the three-part daily practice routine for achieving consistent growth in just 30 minutes a day. If you don't have much time, if you're busy, this is for you because it shows you the, the main things you need to be working on. Because we know we wanna grow, we wanna reach our goals, we wanna reach our dreams and become the drummers that we know we're meant to be, that we're called to be. But the problem is that there's just not enough time and there's not, we don't have a lot of direction in our practicing and so everything's confusing and overwhelming. What this guide does is it simplifies all that, streamlines all that, so you know, here are the three main areas I need to be practicing consistently. Here's what to practice here, here's what to do here, so you do a little of this category, a little of this category, and if you do that, your practice will be well-rounded, and you will grow steadily, and you will be able to reach your full potential on the drums, and reach your dreams of becoming a great musical drummer that everybody loves to play with. So, check it out, totally free. All right, let's get on with today's lesson. I recently asked all the students in my membership, I have an online paid membership with, uh, with a bunch of students, and I asked them, of all the things you've practiced in 2021, what's the one thing that's made the biggest difference in your playing? This is kind of like our end of the year kind of thing, like what's the biggest thing that you've practiced this year that's led to the most results? And so it, it was really interesting seeing all the responses and seeing like, okay, some of these things were very simple and very expected. Others of these things were not quite as expected. And so we'll start with the most fundamental. We'll go through the six biggest takeaways from this, this discussion inside this community. And we'll work our way into some of the most interesting and potentially most important of these strategies. So these are you know, simple and practical things as well as very key strategies. So very interesting stuff, let's, let's dig in. Growth tip number one, learning grip early on before forming bad habits. If you are a beginner drummer, Focus on grip. I cannot say that enough. Focus on grip. That's the most important thing you can ever focus on. If you are a somewhat of a maybe beginner drummer, but maybe you've come back to the drums later on in life, or maybe you've just been playing for a long time, maybe there are some habits you've got to work to unlearn, some things you've got to redo. And that's normal and that's totally fine. Many of us are in that camp where we're having to work to undo some things. That's okay, it might mean, it might require some patience. It might take some hard work and some diligence to undo bad habits and learn good grip. But to those of you who are new to the drums, I want you to avoid that and I want you to work at your grip every day. Work on your fulcrum, work on having loose grip, that way you can avoid potential problems down the road that you then have to work to, to undo maybe five or 10 years later. It's funny because um, one of my students said that initially as he was working on, on this, you know, just focusing on grip, he said initially it felt like a step back because I think it was exposing a lot of issues for him. He was realizing, wow, this is really hard. I feel like I'm working backwards now. Like I'm having to go back and redo things. But in the end, his playing improved way beyond his expectation. He said it was totally worth it, which was great to hear because his hard work paid off and he realized, you know what? Now that I've worked to undo this and fix my grip, now everything feels so much better. And that could definitely be true for you too. Another student said that he realized he had different fulcrums on his right hand and his left hand. And so he realized, okay, right hand's looking good, weak hand, maybe not so much. And so he had to go back to basics just with his singles to work on fixing that and redoing that because he had been playing for years just dealing with one hand doing one thing and the other hand doing the other thing. But by going back to the basics and fixing that, he was able to experience a lot more freedom and fluidity and evenness around the kit. So it's so important, so crucial. This was something I heard from several students learning grip early on before forming bad habits, or going back to the basics, revisiting grip, and being patient and diligent with it, knowing that even though it feels very difficult to rework your grip, it's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off because it's gonna make everything else easier for you. 
by the way, I'll link some lessons below, digging into the specifics of grip, because we could, we could spend a lot of time getting into this. We always end up touching on this, it seems like in every lesson, because it's so core and it's so important. But it all starts with fulcrum and making sure you've got that hinge point where the stick can move like this in your hand. Maybe you're hinging with middle finger or index, and you're just making sure things are loose and relaxed. That's all there is to it. It just takes some time to establish that. But I'll link some additional lessons to really help you dig deep with that. Growth tip number two, intentionally working on limb independence. Now, this can mean a couple of different things because there are a couple, there are a lot of different ways we can intentionally work on limb independence. But uh, one of my students said that he had never been able to put his left foot on autopilot, but now it's coming together quickly because he intentionally worked on it. He actually said, all right, I'm gonna work on doing this leg bounce thing that Steven talks about. I'm gonna actually work on incorporating this into grooves and it started coming along. And so it was just making that decision to intentionally work on it. So if there's something that's bothering you, like if a weak hand is bothering you, don't put up with that. Stop, stop putting up with a weak hand that's wreaking havoc on your playing. Don't deal with it any longer. And if you've got a left foot that just won't work and won't do anything, that's totally natural by the way, because what do we ever use our left feet for in normal life? We don't even use it when we drive a car. Uh, well, I guess unless you're driving manual, maybe you use left foot for, um, I should not try to talk about that because it's not like I can drive stairs. I've tried a few times, but I definitely am not very good at it and haven't practiced much. Anyways, left foot often does not get used much, and so it's very natural for it to not really want to behave. <laughs> and so it requires a lot of patience, so intentionally choose to work on these things. Focus on your weak areas. When you intentionally focus on a weak area, you see a lot more growth than when you keep practicing the same things over and over again. So intentionally work limb independence. Also, kind of a, another way to, to work this, just by logging hours at the kit, you're going to naturally increase your independence because coordination and comfort are kind of the same thing. I've, you might have heard me say that before, that you build comfort by logging hours on the kit, you build comfort by building coordination, and the more comfortable you get, well, that means the more coordinated you are. So those two things are hand in hand. And so just by playing a bunch, even if you have basic coordination, but say you're playing like three gigs a week with a cover band, so maybe you're logging 12, 12 real world hours on the kit every week, that's awesome. And that really pushes you toward great independence, even if you're not sitting around practicing independence exercises, just logging that time helps a bunch. I remember being in high school and, um, there was, there was a particular song, so those of you who have played in church for a long time, you might remember this one. It was called Sing, Sing, Sing. Not the old 1930s big band Sing, 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 doom, 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 doom. But this was, a, this was a modern like uh, Christian worship song by Chris Tomlin in the 2000s, I think. And it was a pretty upbeat song, four on the floor, and it had a tom thing on top. Boom, doom, doom, boom, boom, doom, boom, Kind of like that. And I remember the first time I played that in, in my high school worship band in my church, I was just having to focus so hard and try to hold that together and uh, I hope I don't mess up, I hope I don't mess up. Then a few weeks went by and meanwhile I was practicing coordination, I was working my feet, I was actually practicing out of this book right here, Jim Chapin, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer, great coordination method book from the, like the jazz bebop perspective and if you, can, if you can work like jazz coordination stuff, that's gonna carry over into all your rock playing. This is a topic for another video but Definitely a method worth looking up and checking out. So I was practicing that on my own. A few weeks later, maybe like a month or so later, we ended up playing that same song again on a Sunday morning. Boom, boom, boom. And it felt so much easier. And so it occurred to me in that moment that, wow, I didn't practice these kinds of tom patterns between like a month or two ago and now, but because I've been intentionally working my coordination, this has gotten easier. And this is an amazing feeling. I remember being so excited about that realizing, wow, I've grown. And that's the cool thing about when you're playing with a band regularly and you're playing the same songs over and over again. Meanwhile, in your practice sessions, you're working coordination and you're working your technique. You'll have these moments where you realize certain songs get easier and that's so encouraging. So I hope that you've had moments like that. I hope you will have moments like that. I hope you take this, these tips today and you go practice them. The three-part practice guide is full of coordination exercises that will work your left foot, that'll work the kick-snare interaction and making sure that your right foot is independent from your right hand and doesn't follow it. If you work these things diligently, you will experience that same kind of realization that I just told you about where suddenly a, a particular song will get easier. You can definitely do this. Number three, so we kind of get into, you know, we've covered grip, we've talked a little about coordination here, and these are very core, very important things to work on. But here's more of like a, a mental, psychological one, and I think this is brilliant. Growth tip number three, 
progress, not perfection. I wrote this in my outline in all caps, progress, not perfection. Being okay with slow, methodical progress. One of my students said that uh, basically giving myself permission to be okay with where I am now. Just taking satisfaction and being better today than I was yesterday, knowing that I'm gradually growing, that I'm not going to be perfect, I'm not ever going to be perfect. Perfection is impossible. You can't, you can't aim for that. If your goal is perfection, you're always gonna be frustrated. That's something I know I personally have had to learn because I like the idea of my playing being perfect. I like the idea of playing a song perfectly. It's funny how we all strive for that, but yet we all know deep down inside it's impossible. And so you have to be okay with that methodical progress. Be patient because mastery rarely comes instantly. Um, one of my students in my membership actually said something brilliant. I didn't write it down. This just popped into my head. Talking about excellence over mastery. So rather than, rather than using the word like mastering something or perfecting something, he prefers excellence. And I said, hey, this is brilliant. I'm gonna have to use this. The whole idea is you wanna be excellent in what you do. You wanna have that quality of excellence in everything you do where you're always striving to get better. You're being patient and you are getting better methodically knowing that you're reaching goals. You're not going to be perfect. You're not ever going to feel like you're too good to keep working at it if you've mastered it because that's the danger of the word mastery that, oh, once I've mastered this, that means I've checked the box and I've moved on. Even if we've mastered something, we still can learn and we still can work at things. I've, I feel like a, a lot of the best session drummers out there, they probably mastered the drums decades ago. Uh, somebody like Jeff Percaro, um, he probably mastered the drums in the early 70s, like when he was a teenager. Uh, but then he continued pushing the envelope and being more creative and, and pushing what he could do on the drums even past mastery. And so we don't want mastery to be the end point, we wanna constantly be striving for excellence and striving to be better today than we were yesterday. Learn something new every gig, learn something new every song. So when you can take this mindset, it gives you patience. It gives you patience and it helps you be thankful for where you're at. That's something that I wanna make sure that you're not getting stuck at. If, if you can be thankful, like actually have gratitude for the amount of skill that you have right now, where you've come from since last week or last month or last year, then you're going to be much happier and you're gonna be much joyful in your playing. But if you're constantly wishing you were better and you're constantly comparing yourself to other players and you're constantly looking ahead at this milestone that's like years ahead of you, you're gonna get discouraged. So I want you to take pride and satisfaction on where you're at and where you're at right now compared to where you were. Have fulfillment and joy in a little bit of progress every day. Like, hey, my grip got a little bit better. My weak hand feels a little better. Hey, I can now start doing a little bit of this leg bounce and hey, it's a mess, but I couldn't do this last week. That's progress, progress over perfection. And so I hope that's encouraging. I hope that's encouraging to you because this is something we get stuck on so many times and it depends on your personality. If you're a perfectionist, this is definitely something that you can easily get stuck on. If you're someone who like you just, you love musical greatness and epicness and things to sound awesome, it's easy to get hung up on this where you want everything to just be great and perfect and you wanna get there, but you're having a hard time being patient. I want you to take satisfaction and pride in where you're at now compared to where you're at last week. All right, number four, number four. This is an interesting one. Um, focusing on the music. Spending lots of time playing songs. So one of my students, he just said that what helped him the most in 2021 was playing, 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 playing. Just playing music, playing songs. And that was most helpful to him because it was motivating, it was fun. It wasn't just playing exercises. He was having fun playing songs and that helped him log more hours on the kit, which like we said a few minutes ago, helps with your comfort, which helps with your coordination. And so make sure that music is a huge part of your practicing because without that, it's gonna feel empty. Why'd you get into the drums in the first place? Have you ever thought about that question? Like, why, why are you here right now? Why are you watching this video? Why do you wanna get better at the drums? Is it so that you can play faster singles or faster doubles? Or is it so that you can impress your friends? <laughs> if we're honest, that could be it. But deeper than that, because even once you've, once you've impressed people, you're still gonna feel empty. Deeper than that, what is it that's motivating you? I think for most of us, if we dig deep, there's some kind of, something deep inside of us that makes us long to create music and feeling and do something emotional, like 
express ourselves in a deep creative way that we can't in any other way. In a way that we can only do on the drums. And it's something that, something that we, we have to admit that to ourselves, I think. We have to admit that to ourselves and know that we're wanting to get really good at the music. And the, all the technique stuff, that's a means to an end. And so play music, have a lot of music, like have a playlist of favorite songs that get you pumped to learn the drums. I did this all the time in high school where I would just have favorite songs I would go listen to and I would sit and listen to these songs and they would get me hyped up and I'd be like, yeah, I wanna go practice now. And so I would listen to my favorite songs and then I'd jump on the kit and I would practice my shaping exercises and my, all this stuff. These were the main things I was practicing when I was in high school. Chapin, realistic rock. Syncopation, Ted Reed, great methods. Definitely check out all of these, super helpful. And so by, by listening to songs and thinking about playing songs, I would get motivated to go do that. And so listen to music, play along to songs, learn songs, let that be your huge motivator. One other quick thought as far as the focusing on music. If you ever feel like you're lacking creativity in your playing, this is the way to get there. I recently listened to a podcast about like how to unleash your creativity, how to be more creative in just the things you do. And a lot of the points were, um, you know, switching up your environment that you're in or doing something a little out of the ordinary, doing something different, like taking a different route to work, uh, going and like working in a different spot if you can, or in a different room in your house if you're working at a desk in your house, because that can get pretty monotonous or going on a walk, or just doing something different because it wakes your brain up, because our brains go on autopilot, and they go into, you know, we're in our routine in the morning. We get up, and we take a shower, and we eat breakfast, and the things that we, it's such a routine, and it's so mundane that our brain just kind of goes on autopilot and falls asleep in a way. But if you can do something interesting or out of the ordinary, it will wake your brain up. And a great way to do that as a musician, as applied to learning drums, is listen to some music. Like when, maybe even before you pick up your sticks, before you start playing on your pad, put on your headphones, so we're not just talking phone speaker or Bluetooth speaker, put on your headphones, immerse yourself and hit play on a favorite song and then maybe pick a song that you haven't listened to yet or haven't listened to in a long time. So again, something out of the ordinary, it's gonna get your brain like perked up, like, oh, this is cool, yeah, I love listening to this. And it's gonna get your ears going, your ears are gonna be listening, your brain's gonna be spinning and enjoying listening to the music and that's going to prepare you mentally for focusing more when you practice. That's so helpful and it's so motivating extremely helpful. Honestly, that's that's been a huge part of my personal motivation and my wanting to get better at the drums. And so let the music be your motivator. Test that out. See if that doesn't help you feel more creative and feel more inspired to practice. Listen to music, find a favorite song, and then maybe a, a new song that you haven't listened to or that you haven't listened to in a while. I think that'll help you out. All right, we got a couple more of these, and these are really good ones. So here's something very specific and, and tangible, concrete. Growth tip number five. Practice to a half note click, which helps so much with building time. I love what one of my students posted. He, he was saying, it sounds way too simple. It just sounds too simple, but it is, and even boring. <laughs> it sounds simple and even boring, but it is so helpful for building better time at quick tempos and at slow tempos, practicing to a half note click. What do I mean by that? So if you're new to like music terminology and music notation and like quarter notes and half notes, so if most, most grooves that we're playing, we're counting to four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So if your click is playing quarter notes, that's four clicks. And that's what we might practice to most often. Or we might practice to an eighth note click, which would be one and two and three and four. What this student said was that he practiced to a half note click. So he cut the click on two and four. So it only clicked on one and three. So it was one, three, four, one, two, like that. And so there's less clicks. So he has to listen more to himself, pay more attention to how his playing is feeling rather than just listening to the click and gluing himself to the click. This is something that we call metronome weaning. And we had some trainings. We focused a lot for a whole month on this inside the membership with my membership students. And it was really cool, really fun. And we've talked about this a little here on the, the YouTube channel too. A great way to do this, there's a metronome app that I love. It's called Tempo Advance. I've been using it since 2010. It cost a couple dollars then, I think it's still just three or four bucks, well worth it. You can mute beats, so you can have your, you know, your four beats and you can mute certain ones, so you can have it click just on one and three, on just two and four, just on one, whatever you wanna do. There's also an app that's super helpful that actually a student in my membership turned me onto a few months ago called Gap Click by Benny Greb. And it's really cool because 
it'll click for however many measures you want it to click for, and then you can have it be silent for however long you want it to be silent for. So you create gaps in the click. So you're playing along, suddenly the click stops, you gotta keep going, pay attention to your time, listen to yourself, how's everything feeling? Bum, bum, the click comes back in and you find out whether or not you were with it. Great timing test. So check out those apps. If you're willing to spend a few bucks, well worth it. Tempo Advance and Gap Click, two most helpful metronome apps I've ever used, I think. So this can be super helpful with building time, building feel. I'll link the video in the description where we talk a little more about this here on the channel. All right, last one. Last point, number six, and this is a huge one. Of course, I saved the huge one for last. And this is a big overarching one, something that involves mindset. And this is something that we all need to do. Prioritize the drums. So don't wait until you have time for the drums. You've gotta make time. One of my students said that, you know, just deciding to sit down and play, just sitting down and playing, making drumming a priority was huge. That was a huge turning point for him because previously it just wasn't a priority, but when he made it a priority, he started seeing a lot of growth. That was a big deal for him. We make time for so many things in life. Um, maybe it's to watch movies, to watch a favorite TV show, to hang out with our family, to do yard work, to paint a bedroom, you know, all the mundane things that maybe we choose to make time for, or we have to make time for. There's really, in this day and age, there's no having time for stuff. We don't just have time for things. We have to make time for things because we're all busy. We've all got our lives. And so, you know, unless you're like single and, and 25 or something, you're probably busy. If you've got kids, like young kids like I do, then life is busy. Life is chaotic. If you're in school, it's busy. Work can be busy. You have to make time for things. But here's the, here's the thing. You don't have to make a lot of time for the drums. This isn't a three-hour-a-day commitment. Though that's great if you can. If you're retired or if you're in high school, <laughs> you can do the three hour a day thing. I did that when I was in high school and it was awesome. Do it when you've got the chance. But if all you've got is 30 minutes a day, or maybe you've got like three, four hours on a weekend, like on a Saturday, that's great. A lot 30 minutes a day or a few hours on a weekend to work at this stuff. Now, it's also easier to prioritize when you have a plan. When you know what you're gonna practice and there's purpose behind it and you know that you're going to grow today, because you know what you're gonna practice, you know what you need to practice, and so it's not just a kind of a wishy-washy, all right, I'm gonna sit down and play through some stuff and hope something happens today, and up oh, there's my 30 minutes, I gotta to go to work, or I gotta to go to bed, or I gotta go you know, pick my kid up from school. Then it kind of becomes a waste of time because you didn't get anything done. So if you're going to make time for the drums, you've gotta be strategic and you've gotta make a plan. Here's what I'm gonna to do today. So download that guide I told you about earlier. Grab that three-part practice guide. That's gonna give you all the direction you need here to get started and to know, all right, here's what I need to work on with in-hand technique. Here's what I need to do with coordination. Here's what I need to do with music. This is gonna help you form a plan so that you're always practicing something with purpose and with strategy, which leads to results. So grab that guide. This is huge. This has been the most helpful guide here on the channel. So many people have downloaded it and it's become a big part of their practice. And you can print it off, download it, put it on your iPad, print it off, have it on your music stand. There's some great coordination exercises there so you can prioritize limb independence. There's tips on hand technique. We've got some exercises. There's all sorts of tips on music and listening. So this is your one-stop shop. Know what to practice, the three-part daily practice routine for achieving consistent growth in just 30 minutes a day. My free gift to you, go grab it. It's gonna help you out and really help you with prioritizing the drums. So, hey, combine that with all the tips we talked about today and you're gonna make some serious progress. You can do this, you can master the drums, you can achieve excellence on this instrument, growing little by little and being proud of that pro progress and being okay with that slow methodical progress. Be patient with yourself, know that these things take time, but know that you can do it. When you work at this regularly, you can achieve a lot of great things on the drums and become the drummer that you know you're made to be. I believe in you, I hope you do too. As always, thanks so much for hanging out today. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope this was super helpful to, to you and toward your drumming and your practicing. Leave a comment below, let me know, shoot me an email. Uh, hey, subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be sure to grab the guide. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous.